In 2019, about two out of three workers in the Denver area got to work by driving alone. That was a little better than the national average, but still not that great. And then COVID came along, the pandemic started, and all of a sudden, lots of people were working at home. Lots of cars were off the road. Telecommuting was a thing. And we thought that with telecommuting, clearly we were going to have sustainability gains. We were going to have fewer cars on the road, less smog, less congestion, and even in our office buildings, we'd be using less energy. It sounded promising, and certainly there was a lot of interest by employers and employees in doing telecommuting. The Denver Regional Council of Governments actually did a survey of both employers and employees, and from what they heard, both sides liked this telecommuting experience. It really has presented us with this unprecedented opportunity to see what clean air can look like, just to see how employees and employers were managing this totally new work situation and, and how they were doing with it. We developed a fairly robust survey. 81% of senior management and 73% of supervisory level managers viewed teleworking more favorably after COVID-19. 86% expect to permit teleworking after the COVID-19 outbreak. Employees reported that they saw themselves as just as productive, but at the same time, it improved their work-life balance. Um, one of the cons I think that we saw coming out was the lack of engagement with other employees can, can feel isolating. Um, but really, even from an employer perspective, there are tons of benefits, um, including business continuity, increased innovation, um, productivity, morale, safety, security, potentially even lower, lower expenses if you're not paying you know, rent on an office at that time. An employee would prefer to have about 40% of the time spent teleworking or remote working out of the office. We expect that employers in the Denver region will continue to offer telework as an option about 20 to 25% of the time. So there's a little bit of a gap, but really, I mean, if an employee who was taking potentially an SOV commute and is replacing that one commute with a telework day, that is progress. So we'll take what we can get. It sounds from what Allison told, tells us from Dr. Cog that telecommuting has a very bright future. Both workers and uh, their employers like it, but it's not so simple. It doesn't necessarily add up to as much sustainability as we thought. For one thing, while there are fewer people driving to work, there may be more people driving around in the suburbs where they live. People may actually move out more to the suburbs because they don't have to come downtown. And energy that we use in buildings might not be quite as far down as we thought it was. While people are leaving office buildings, they're starting to work at home and using more energy there. We talked to a Professor Liam O'Brien from Claremont University in Ottawa, Canada. He's been studying these problems and he says things aren't as clear as we might think. So we've done a study, uh, and it's local to Ottawa, but I suspect this is fairly representative of, of all of North America. Uh, we've seen in the springtime, so sort of immediately after um, COVID really uh, took a hold, um, energy use in homes went up by about 25%. In the summer, it went up by about 35% compared to the previous summer. And I believe the reason for that is more air conditioning. The energy picture, therefore, isn't quite so clear. Yes, we may be saving energy by having fewer people driving, but we may be using more energy overall in our buildings. And that's not the only part of telecommuting that may have some problems associated with it. Telecommuting is something that, for some people, they get to do it but for other people, they have to do it. And like anything else where there's both a burden and a benefit, it's possible that there can be inequity introduced into the workplace. Tamika Matthews of Violence for Colorado tells us a little bit about this. I think that we're seeing that happen every day when we talk about sending our essential workers out to continue uh, doing their jobs, while there's a healthy percentage of us, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent, that are able to work from home. And, you know, there's, there's definitely inequity built into that. And even in the pieces of 
uh, as you said, the positional power of who gets to work from home. Um, you know, you may find that there are people who are higher up the food chain who have those opportunities while other people do not. And then we can also look at this from a perspective of marginalized communities. The people who are being impacted, most mostly impacted right now by COVID-19 are black and brown communities. And they are also the people who are most likely to be working outside of the home right now. So you have this, you know, situation in which we are sending uh, the people who are most at risk into these circumstances and, and right into the belly of the beast, essentially. Telecommuting, if it's not handled properly, can result in inequity. And there's other social problems that result from telecommuting because not everyone wants to work at home or can work at home. Obviously, the pandemic has forced everyone to be at home more in some capacity. And in doing so, that has put survivors in situations that aren't always necessarily safe. Um, you know, domestic violence is really a piece around power and control. And uh, someone who is using abusive behaviors, maintaining that power and control in a relationship. And one of the elements of that is isolation. And that is definitely something that we're seeing happening with telecommuting in which uh, survivors are being forced back into a home with someone using abusive behaviors and being cut off from potential support systems that they have had in the past. Some places are seeing numbers that are very similar to what they saw before the pandemic began. Others have seen an uptick. But what I can also speak to is that anytime you have like stressors in the household, it follows that you know domestic violence may increase right anytime you have financial insecurities economic you know instability uh new child care concerns any of those things are going to kind of add to a pressure cooker situation we've heard then that telecommuting has a lot of benefits but it can also have problems fortunately some government agencies around the country are already looking at those problems and trying to find a way to get us the benefits without having the problems. One such agency is the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission in Columbus, Ohio. They've developed one of the first telecommuting guides for employers and employees. And Lexi Petrella of Morpsey tells us more. So the first thing that we really encourage employers to consider is the importance of communication. Um, that process will allow them to evaluate what's best for each employee based on their needs, the second most important thing is having that umbrella telework policy for a company. This is something that can be refined over time because we're all learning as we go, especially as we're jumping into telework due to COVID-19. The third thing that's really important is having that employer employee agreement. And that allows everyone to understand what's expected of them. And this is again, something that can be refined over time but it can be specific to each employee based on their position, their responsibilities, and their role, and what makes them successful as an individual. So it sounds like you expect this telework guide to be an ongoing project. You will be uh, updating it from time to time and continuing your research? The first time we realized it wasn't going to be a static document was when we decided that we needed to confront the disparities of working from home. So, will telecommuting make our cities more sustainable or less sustainable? And the answer is maybe. There are certainly benefits to working at home or working from a remote location, but we've also identified a number of problems that can go with that. Telecommuting is here to stay and it will be growing. It can be a good thing for our urban sustainability if we plan for it thoughtfully and carefully and proactively. And it's great to know that there are people who are doing that right now. You hear the expression so often that these are unprecedented times, right? These are, this is a circumstance that no one expected. No one quite knows how to navigate. Whether you're an individual or a policymaker, it's so important to think beyond um, the immediate and obvious impacts of, of policy decisions or personal decisions. We need to think broad and we need to think long term. One type of telework pattern doesn't work for one company and it may not work for every employee within the company. A lot of individuals don't think about if it's easy for them based on their job, their socioeconomic status, and their access to technology. We are big proponents of um, employees and employers just doing what you can because really not every commute option and not every sustainable commute option 
will work for every individual and it won't work for every employer. We've seen so many things brought to light. We've seen so many inequities brought to light. And I think that this is definitely a time of reckoning. I think that this is a time of change. I think it's a time of opportunity. And I would just ask that we take the time to consider what people are going through, what they're experiencing, and give them the flexibility and um, freedom to find ways to thrive and be successful and make sure that that extends not just during this pandemic, but well beyond it.